Hello, beautiful souls. This is Ashley Pitzer, your host with Practicing Life Podcast. Today's episode is on manifestation. You could also look at this as the law of attraction. However you choose to look at this, we are going to talk about how you bring things that you really want to have happen in your life to your life. So I'm going to start off with a story. This weekend, we celebrated my teenager's birthday, and we were spending time just the two of us. And he asked me in that time, if I could go back in time, would I choose not to have children? Now, this is a really interesting question for a teenager to ask, and there could be a lot of reasons for him asking it. But before I go into a little bit of the story, I want to tell you something that I don't talk to him about, which was that I didn't want to have kids. I really wasn't interested in having kids. I did not, um, growing up, feel very close to kids. That wasn't something that I desired to do. But there became a point in my life where obviously I changed my mind and I now have two beautiful kids. And what's super, super interesting is having known this now, uh, because I've just told you, (laughs) I would tell you that not only do I have two kids, but I have two kids who require extra time and attention, energy and effort. They are two kids who, like, for instance, my my youngest one requires one-on-one assistance the entire time, right? So I don't have a situation in my life where I can just like, oh, go to your room and play. (laughs) Not an option for me, right? So isn't it interesting when you think about who I am today and where I stand today that I have two kids when I had a personality growing up and even within the five years of my marriage, I did not want to have kids. And I've manifested a life where I have two kids who require more parental supervision than the typical child does. Interesting, right? So this is why I bring this up in this conversation with my uh, son was very interesting that he would bring it up and ask that, but it was really great because I had an opportunity to sit back and reflect in that moment and say, you know what? I would choose to have kids because where I am at in life is exactly where I'm supposed to be. Now, you've brought up to my attention that I could do things a little bit differently in my life to make it more aligned for me, but I would choose to have you guys again, right? So really great conversation. And I'm bringing this up just to illustrate so many things, okay? One of the things, I have a little bit of a pet peeve when it comes to manifesting because we all talk about it like, oh my gosh, I'm going to manifest my dreams. But the thing is, this is my pet peeve, the thing is you are manifesting all day long, all day long. You cannot opt out of manifesting. You're manifesting right now as you listen to this podcast. You are manifesting. It's not something that you can take a vacation from. It's not something you can put on pause. You're manifesting all day long, every day. Your energy Your emotions, your thoughts are creating a vibration, which is creating a frequency and ascending out to the universe. And so all day long, your universe, our universe is sitting here reading these frequencies and putting everything that you say, think, do into motion, right? So that's one of the things I want to talk to you about. So like, I know this is super, super crude, but this is for my husband, the people out there, he does not follow my train of thought with a lot of my spiritual aspects and subconscious reprogramming and energy. So um, one of the things that I will say to him, you know, just to appease the way he thinks is, you know what, you're even manifesting your poop. Okay. Because you are making choices based on the thoughts that you're thinking that then create an emotion, which then create an action or behavior, you know, to go and eat certain foods or to have another cup of coffee, which is a stimulant for, you know, go and poop. (laughs) So anyway, all day long, you're manifesting. So you're even manifesting down to your boob. Okay. It's that basic and it's that simple all day long. This is the reality. I know I'm pushing this. 
But what we really want to talk about, what we're really interested in talking about is intentional manifestation. But I just want to make sure that you understand very clearly, no matter what you do, you're manifesting. So we're going to talk about the five steps that I'm going to give you as far as how to intentionally manifest. But first, you have to understand that the life that you have right now, the life that you are living right now, regardless if you agree with it or don't agree with it, regardless if you're happy with it or not happy with it, you've created. So let's break that down a little bit. First of all, your internal world what you feel on the inside, what you think on the inside, what you try to, you know, put up a wall so nobody can see the real you, that person, that inner child, that's who's manifesting everything all day long. So you can put on a show for people, you can fake it till you make it, but your inner world is creating your outer world. So like I said, you can't opt out of manifestation. So I could ask you, how does your bank account look? Is it where you want it to be? Are you living paycheck to paycheck? I could ask you, how is your health? Are you yo-yo dieting? Do you constantly find yourself going and eating the foods that you don't want to be eating? Right? Everything on the inside of you, all of those hidden thoughts, all of those hidden images that are going on in your mind and your subconscious, is mirroring your outside world. That's why as a coach, sometimes it's it's a little bit easier for me because I understand this on a very deep personal level. So when I'm coaching somebody and we're talking about something, then I know that there's an issue with something going on internally within them because it's not what they want to see in their external environment, which is what they come to me for, right? They come to me because there's something in their external environment that they want to change and they may be taking X, Y, Z actions, but they're not getting the results that they want to get. So then they come to me and we do hypnosis and we coaching and we work on the internal side of you, your inner child, your energy, your internal thoughts, your internal images, right? All right. So that's one aspect of it. I made myself notes because there's so many things that I want to hit on. Um, the other aspect that you're always manifesting is you speak your life into existence. I like to personally say you speak your life into reality. So this is a really kind of bizarre concept. Um, it's, it's in my book that I'm writing but I will touch on it right now. Just very, very basic. This moment that you are living in right now, the present is literally the past and the future at the exact same time. I just love it. I just love it. It blows my mind and I love it. So here's the thing. Your current present is based on your past thoughts that have manifested today. But as you stand here today, you are creating your future. So it's mind blowing in a way because like for instance, when people want to make a change, which we all want an instant, you know, we want an instant gratification because we've been cultured into having this type of reality in so many ways. You know, Amazon two day per or two day delivery now sometimes is in like one hour. My router broke down and I was able to overnight it. And bam, in the morning, I had a new router. Like we are in a society now where we are so blessed to have instant gratification in so many ways. But manifestation doesn't have the type of timeline that we have in our 3D world. Some things can happen super, super quickly, and some things are going to take time. So as you stand here today, whatever thoughts you are thinking is creating tomorrow for you. It is creating next week for you, next month for you, one year from you, you know, one year from now. So all day long, you can be upset. You can waste your time and your energy and your effort and your focus being upset that as you wake up this morning, there's not $1 million in your bank account. <laughs> Like, this is something like when we talk about manifesting, it's like $1 million. Everybody wants $1 million. I get you. I get you. Okay. Um, but you can wake up in the morning and be upset that you don't have $1 million today. 
You don't know whether or not it's coming to you in the future, but because you're spending the time to be upset with it now in this moment today, it's like you're taking away the energy, the goodwill, the effort that you have spent building it for the future. So I would tell you all really to let go of getting upset and getting worried or any of that stuff, because really, honestly, and and, and I know we talk about manifesting a lot in regards to money, but it can be anything. It can be, it can be finding that soulmate, that ideal partner Um, for coaching for me. Like for instance, for me, I spend time thinking about my ideal client and who I want to work with and how that feels to me. Right. So I can wake up in the morning and I could be like, Oh, you know, like, I didn't manifest, uh, let's think of some, I didn't manifest my car. It's not here yet. I didn't manifest, I'm working on a home, right? I I have a dream board on my home. I'm working on manifesting home. So I could wake up in the morning and be like, man, I keep looking at Zillow and realtor.com and my perfect home hasn't shown up. I'm putting in the energy, I'm putting in the effort, I'm meditating on this, I'm saying all the right things, and I could get really worked up in that, and I could go down that rabbit hole of negative thinking and negative self-talk, but all I'm doing is washing away all of the good stuff that I created with that manifesting of the good things I want, like spending the time and the energy to meditate on what I want. I don't, I don't know about you, but I don't like to sit there like, uh, like redoing something like the other day we were editing my book and we spent like two hours editing and it didn't get saved. So we had to go back and redo it. Now I don't like to repeat work. (laughs) That's just me. Time is precious. And I absolutely love my time, but you know what? Like a perfect example in this situation, right? I didn't want, and I chose not to spend the time saying like, oh, this is so frustrating. Like now I have to go back and spend another two hours. Like I've already done this. I have to do it. I didn't go that direction because I've done a lot of inner work and I understand how the law of attraction works and I understand manifestation. So I don't invest my intention and my time and my effort in that way. Instead, I sit there and think, all right, this is great because it's going to be so much faster because I already know what I'm looking for on my edits. And I may catch something else that I didn't catch before. And I turn it into something that is rewarding and beneficial to me. All right. So going on to the fact, first step of understanding all of this, this isn't your five steps, but like the first thing I want you to understand is all day long, you're manifesting. So you speak your life into reality. As you live in the present, you are experiencing your past thoughts, your past self-talk, your past images in your mind, and you're also simultaneously creating your future by the current thoughts you're thinking, the current thoughts that you're visualizing. This is why it's so important that you spend time thinking about what you want in your life and moving your attention away from things that you don't want. And I know I've spoken on this a million times, but I'm going to say it again because you cannot say it enough. Most people spend their time, their energy, their effort, focusing on what they don't want, focusing on lack. We went to Oktoberfest. I love Oktoberfest. And I had decided that I was going to buy one of the Oktoberfest outfits. It's something that I've wanted for years and years and years. And so I've always told myself, no, you know, I'm not going to invest that money on it. But I had decided this time that I was going to do it. I was going to buy one of these outfits and I couldn't wait to wear it around the, the festival. But you know what? I went in there and I did not see something that I really, really enjoyed. And so I didn't spend the money doing it. And that's okay. Like I don't sit there and judge that manifestation. Like I did something wrong. I didn't try hard enough. I didn't say the right words. I don't go through that. I know something better is waiting for me. You know, I know that the right outfit for me is on its way to me. It's happening. That's the belief. It's happening. All right. So we speak our life into existence right now. All right. So let's talk about that intentional manifesting because that's what you really want. All right. The five steps. Step one, set clear 
intentions with specific details. Now, working with people, <laughs> sometimes everybody has a different stage in this process that they either just really kick ass at or they struggle with, right? Like there's in between that too. But this is my area where I really rock it because I love creating visions as a storyteller, as somebody who writes books. I'm all about step one and I can create my vision, no problem. And that's something that I enjoy helping my clients create too. But what I would tell you, so step one on creating your vision, a, a secret little tip, a tip to really make this beneficial for you is to create into so much detail that it feels like true. It feels like you don't have to guess on anything. You see it, you feel it, you know it. That's how much detail that you want to go into. When I'm writing my stories, what I want you to experience is exactly what I'm seeing in my head. And so I have to think about, well, what does this character really feel like in this moment? What is this character struggling with? What are they doing with their hands? What are they doing with their hair? Are they doing anything funny with their lips? Like I am creating this picture for you so that when you read the story, you feel like the character feels and you can picture it in your mind because I've spelled it out. And that's what I would tell you to do with your intentions. Make it so clear that the universe knows exactly what you want. Now, here's where I do inner work with people when I'm coaching them, because most people don't want to dream as big as they can. And I don't like to say don'ts. I don't like negatives. I like wording everything into a positive, right? But the problem I see is that you ask somebody what they want and they can tell you everything that they don't want. That's not going to help you. That's not going to help you. The universe doesn't work in negatives. It doesn't work in don't wants. It can't reverse it. As somebody who's a parent of two children on the spectrum, I learned very, very early on that their brains are special. They work different. And that's helped me to be such a great coach and a manifester in my own life because their brains work more in line with how the universe works. You tell the universe what you want. You don't put a negative in there. You don't say, like, for instance, when I'm talking to my kid, I, I don't say, like, don't do that. I say, I want you to put the fork down. <laughs> you know, I say, um, I, I, I do this all day long and yet I'm drawing a blank. Isn't that hilarious? Okay. But I, whatever I'm doing with my kid, if they're running away from me, like, I don't say like, stop running like lifeguards. I used to be a lifeguard. I don't yell, stop running. I say, walk. I give the command of what I want to have happen when I pick up my kid and they don't want to leave their activity. I don't go into all of these things. I just say, I intend for you to get into the car. I say what I want. That will make you a better parent, but that's also going to make you a better manifester. Say what you want. And that means that you have to give yourself permission to believe that you are worthy of having what you want. Give yourself permission that you can have exactly what you want. And here's what I would tell you on this, and I'll speak to it a little bit later. Well, I'll just speak to it later. All right, so make it as clear as possible. So step one, you set your intention, you get super specific with it. So I want a house, right? So for me, I know exactly how tall my ceilings are. I know where I want the windows. I want, I know where the direction of the kitchen is. I know what my countertops look like. I know what my island looks like. I know where my refrigerator is. Like, so when I am creating this vision of my ideal house, and <laughs> bless my poor realtor, right? I'm so grateful for my realtor because I won't even go in and see a house because I know from the pictures, this is not what I want. This is not. So she can send me all these houses, but I'm like, nope. Now, I always say in my intentions, and I would recommend that you do this 
to this or something better because I can set these intentions and I can know what they want, but the universe generally is so much more abundant and loving and supportive than even my conscious mind can come up with and create on my own. And I'll give you an example of that too. Wedding day shopping for my wedding dress. Went to my first store with my mom, super excited. I had the intention that I would be doing this for like weeks, trying on dresses and having so much fun and uh, kind of having like a, a mom daughter date and maybe with my sister and my friends. I had this all envisioned, but as it turns out, I went to the first place and ended up finding my wedding dress. Now, when we were looking at the wedding dresses and we were going through the racks, I told my mom, no bows. I don't like bows. I don't want a bow on me. I'm not a freaking present, you know, like, so my mom's showing me dresses and there's all these little expectations and intentions and rules I would have set up of what I had in mind, what I really, really wanted. But my mom kept coming back to this dress and saying, just try it on to appease her, which I don't always recommend appeasing, but I was like, fine, I will try it on. That was the perfect dress for me. And it had a big ass bow on my butt, on my ass. <laughs> so anyway, um, this dress fit me so perfectly. I didn't have to have one altar. It was made for me. So even though I sit there and I tell you, have all of these intentions, set them, make it very, very specific. There's also this understanding that magic happens. So just as I was talking to my husband about certain houses and whether or not we want to see it, I tell him, no, this is why I don't want to see this house, but I'm always open to actually going into it, walking into that house and seeing that the energy aligns with me because I know that there's magic and I know if something draws my attention, even though it wasn't what I had pictured exactly in my mind, if something draws my attention, if something feels like a spark of juice, of life, of light, of love, then I'm going to go that direction. All right. So step two, practice awareness. So this is an area of inner work for people. Practice awareness means a lot of things. So your step two is about being conscious of the thoughts that you're thinking and knowing what comes up for you and to remove as much negative self-talk and imagery that you create in your mind as possible. Because remember that what you are doing today is creating tomorrow. All right. So being aware of your thoughts, being aware of what you're doing, because I personally don't believe that my past has to be my future, but I do understand that my past will be my future if I don't make changes to what is going on internally inside of me right now. All right. So um, also, you know, moving that your thoughts, moving your attention towards what you do want, because what you focus on, you, you seem to attract. I mean, that's just the way it works. So instead of focusing on my bank account only has this much, it is I am so grateful that my bank account has this much. Like I am focusing on the fact that I have versus do not have. I am focusing on like um, when I go someplace that I may not want to go, but my kids want to go instead of focusing on the fact that this place is overstimulating and giving me headaches. I'm focusing on the fact that my kids are having so much fun and isn't it rewarding to have this experience with them and to be a part of their life in this way. Like I'm always moving my attention on what I want to receive out of something. So step number three is take aligned actions. So you have this clear thought of what you want. You're making sure you're training your brain so that you can receive what you want in step two. So step three is take those inspired actions. Take any action that aligns with this vision. In the business world, this is what most people do. They create a mission statement and then they decide to take on projects based on whether or not this aligns with their mission statement. This is where some people can really fail because people like taking action. It makes them, it makes them feel safe and comfortable. Like they're doing something, they're being productive towards something. But if it doesn't align 
with your ultimate vision, then it's really taking you further away from what you want. So this is really about being intentional with your internal boundaries of saying what I want is what I really, really want. So if you were somebody who was dating somebody and you met this person on a, a first date and you decided, you know what, this isn't the person that I want to be with. This doesn't align with me. Don't settle. Don't get into that limited lacking mindset where you think, well, this is all I have right now. So I might as well take it. No, no, my friends, no. Save your time, your energy, your worth for what you really do want in your life, because you are worth it. And when you take those little, those little, uh, those settles, when you take those settles, when you take those things that you know, aren't exactly what you want, you're just then confusing the universe because you're saying, all right, universe, I will take this. I tell the universe, no, I made it clear what I want. This isn't it. And I'm willing to wait for what I really want or something that really aligns with me and lights me up and sparks me, right? So it doesn't have to be exactly what I want because I make room for the magic. But, you know, if I was applying for jobs, and I knew I had these boundaries of what I wanted in the job, I would not lower my boundaries with the lack mentality that this is as good as it's going to get, or this is all I can get right now, right? You have to take aligned actions. You have to be willing to say no. There are times when I tell clients that I'm sorry, you know, this isn't a fit for me, but because I do that, I make room for the clients that are. Okay. And this is the same way with my friendships. There are times when I'm like, okay, you know what? I really enjoyed being your friend. I've enjoyed having this time together, but you know, I'm really going to start moving towards this direction. I don't see yourself going this way. So even with my friends, I'm doing this. Why? Because I'm going to bring in the people that I really want in my life. I'm willing to have that honest conversation with myself. I'm willing to fight for what I really want in life. So these are just examples for me, but I'm going to share them with you because uh, you know we all learn from each other. So that is step three, taking the aligned actions, the inspired actions. Inspired actions to me is like when something just pops into your mind out of nowhere and you're like, oh, well, that seems like a good idea. Do it. <laughs> Do it. Don't sit there and analyze it and think about it. Inspired ideas come to you for a reason. Do it. All right. Step four is believe. So believing that it is already done. So this is what I was going to tell you earlier. What you are seeking is seeking you. I really, really believe this. You would not have this desire within you if you weren't meant to. So and I don't want to get into the subconscious reprogramming here because this has something to do with it as well. But I am saying about intentional manifesting for your highest good and your ultimate healing right? There are things that come up within you because you're meant to walk in this direction. All right. So um, like, for instance, me writing my book, I was doing logistics. I was being a risk manager. I was doing these office jobs, but no matter how much I was doing these office jobs and being content in them, I kept having the desire to write a book. It was just on my heart. It was in my mind. It was there. So believing is about holding on to that. Okay. So everything you want already exists. So that is also part of believing. Again, what you think you create, what you think you perceive becomes reality. Okay. So everything that your mind, everything in the world basically exist because somebody had a thought about it and they were able to construct it into reality. I mean, this is the power of our mind. It's amazing. All right. So everything that you have in your mind that you are perceiving can become a reality. And you have to believe that because without that belief, you're going to be fighting against 
what you really want to create. And this is one of the things that I go into. This is another area where I help people with coaching and with hypnosis, because sometimes that inner child, your experiences with a child, as a child, I should say, sometimes will limit your personal power and what you're able to receive. So like, for instance, when I was growing up, one of the things that my parents, my father specifically always would say was, I didn't want to have you kids. Hence why I don't say anything to my kid. Okay. But my father would always be like, I didn't want to have you. You're not my kids. You know, go see your mother, everything. If we needed something, go see your mother. I didn't want you. Like this was the message. So as you get older and you internalize these messages, the message comes across is like, well, I wasn't wanted. I'm alone. I'm not worthy. Right. And then you get into an adult. And when you start having relationships with other people, then you can sometimes be very clingy to another person because you're always waiting for that person to like abandon you. Right. Because these are based on your inner child, your earlier child experiences. So this is where sometimes manifesting, you might need to get additional help depending on what you have experienced in your life to help you overcome some of these limited beliefs. Because if you don't have the belief that it, it's possible and it's true, you're not going to be sending out the universe's language of frequency. So your, your mind creates thoughts, which create emotions. And that emotion creates a vibrant a vibration, which creates a frequency. And that frequency is read by the universe. That is why everything on your internal world is mirrored on your external world. So you have to believe it. This is super important. You can say affirmations to the point that you start to believe them. Like people that are compulsive liars start to believe their lies, but you have to have the emotion because the emotion is what is eventually going to lead to that frequency. But guess what? Your thoughts create your emotions. So it's all possible. But do you say those affirmations enough to convince your brain? Or do you need the help clearing out your energy, letting go of those blockages, letting go of some of those um, childhood memories that are preventing you from really having what you want in your life? This is where you can come to me. I am willing to help you. You can come to another coach or another hypnotist. I mean, I would ask you to seek those things out. But believing is important because you have to speak the language of the universe. All right. So, you know, like, um, I don't remember exactly how it's worded in the Bible. I apologize. But at one point, I remember um, a, a line in the Bible that said, you know, God doesn't want your empty words, you know, like empty words means no emotion. You're just saying these words without feeling them, right? The universe needs that vibration, that frequency to be able to interpret it and put it into motion. All right. So then the fifth thing is just holding, holding that, holding that belief, believing in it, believe like, so be believing in it, um, step four is believing it without evidence that it's here yet. And then step five is just holding it. You just hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it, right? Do not settle. Do not give up. Just hold it, hold steadfast and keep, like I mentioned earlier, I tell the universe, no, I'm holding out for this because this is what I truly want. This is what I truly deserve. And I'm willing to wait. I tell that to my kids too. <laughs> You know, and um, my kid doesn't want to take her medicine and, you know, I don't believe in forcing this. So I just tell my kid, I'm willing to wait. And trust me, we've been through this enough that my kid knows that I mean what I say. I mean, like I say what I mean, they know this. And so when I say I'm willing to wait, they know that they're not going to outweigh me because I am will. I mean it. I'm willing to wait. And that's exactly what I'm telling the universe. I'm willing to wait. This is happening for me. I believe it. I hold it. I, I'm setting all of these things into motion to make it possible. All right. So these are the things I wanted to talk to you about. I'm going to wrap up really quick with some just manifesting techniques, some tips, right? One, I would tell you to go to hypnosis. That is seriously the fastest way to make what you want your 
intentional manifestations to come true, to get right into that subconscious, to program your mind. So everything lines up with you internally, your identity, your beliefs, your values all line up so that you're sending out that vibration and frequency that the universe understands. So hypnosis, super, super important to writing down your intentions, not just saying them, but writing them down vision boards, super important. You can look at them, you can meditate on them, you can add to them, but having something that you can see outside of you is helpful. Um, also putting your phone, your background picture on your phone as what you want to manifest. So there's times in the past where I've had a suitcase full of money on it, you know, like I'm manifesting this much money in my life. So that's just an idea for you. When you say your affirmations, which is another tip, don't just say meaningless words, say it with emotions. Watch the movie. Like here's some tips for you, right? On affirmations, watch a movie that gets you into the emotional vibration that you want to feel, whether that's joy or if it's, if it's even grieving and you need to let go of maybe a lost one, watch something, you know, whatever it may be and say what you need to say to let that person the animal, whatever it is that you lost, go. So get into a comedy movie, laugh and, you know, say what you want to say. Or if it's about love, watching something that makes you feel love and then asking for what you want, get into your vibration. Meditating on what you want, super important too. Okay. You're just keeping your, whatever you keep your attention on, you attract. That's the law of attraction. Very, very simple. Okay. So meditating on what you want brings it to you. When you are um, creating something, like I've mentioned this before, but I'm making it into a technique so it can just be really black and white for you. You are focusing on what you want to have. And so you are being grateful for what you already have. All right. So let's just talk about um, uh, like my house, right? This is a temporary house for me. My dream house is on its way to me, but I still wake up every single day and I say, thank you for this house. And I also name, I name everything. I name my cars, my beds, my toothbrush. I name things because then that gives it personal value to me. So, you know, I can wake up and I can say, you know, thank you, Alfred. You're so freaking wonderful. You know, like you're always protecting me and keeping me safe from storms, right? Whatever it is that you need to do to show gratitude do. And if you can't feel gratitude, like if you're like, I hate where I live, this is a busy street. I hate my job. Like if you have that type of mentality and you just can't find gratitude, imagine what your life would be without it. And then you'll probably feel gratitude. I went like <laughs> during COVID, during COVID, our hot water heater broke. So there was like six months where we could not get a replacement hot water heater. Uh, replacement, hot water heater replacement. So six months of ice, ice cold showers, which I took cold showers on purpose, you know, to rejuvenate me, to fill that vitality. But it's different when it's winter and it's already cold. I don't take ice cold showers usually in the winter, only during the warmer season. But I got to tell you, I, I, I say thank you for my hot water heater all the time. Now, some of you may be like taking that for granted, but that's just an example because when you have, you don't have it, you realize you've taken it for granted and then you can show a lot more appreciation for it. The same way, like my air conditioning broke on my car this year. And so nice, hot summer, no air conditioning for a short period of time. I could be so grateful for when I felt that air conditioning come back on and blast air in my face, like, a, yes, <laughs> right. So grateful. So grateful. Um, listening to songs that have the words gratitude, grateful in it can even help you being in that mindset of always being grateful, like secret sauce to life. Okay. So I'm going to wrap it up with that. I want to tell you all that you matter, you matter, and I want you to manifest the life that you want. And I am here to help you make that possible. All right. I will see you next time.